Hello there, this is Garrett of Outer Ground Studios, and today I'm going to be giving a bit of a 2D animation, 2D animation, uh, tutorial for you guys. Uh, this being this, uh, my second video for this channel, you know, it's not gonna be that great. Uh, I may make a revised tutorial later, but this is what it is for now. Now, this is just gonna be a basic 2D animation terminology and some tr tips and tricks you can use none of them are really going to be in depth it's just going to be just basic stuff that i'm just going to let you guys know about right now that i've learned and then i'll have more tutorials later for in-depth stuff uh okay so we are in currently in a the demo of uh tv paint which is actually a really good 2d animation software on your computer <sighs> and uh so the first thing we're going to start off with is frame rate now, I know a lot of you will probably say, oh, I know about frame rate. Well, and then a lot of people will be like, what's frame rate? Well, frame rate is basically, with animation, animation is basically flipping through images rapidly that you've drawn or taken. And then that creates the illusion of movement. Each each picture is just like a like a little, little bit, little, like, like watch my hand. It, almost like one frame, one frame, one frame, one frame. And then the frame rate is how fast that plays at this um the the factor the what the the company standard not company but like factory standard for uh like movies cartoons and sometimes video games is between 24 and 30 frames per second uh older movies play it between 12 and 15 especially old 2d animated movies and actually 12 frames per second is the is the the line where where human the human eye starts to perceive images for this starts to perceive the difference between images and motion so if if i put this at 12 frames per second and i did a little like okay so let's just make a, a little video of a ball bouncing this is shift k oh crap i, for, I should have done all this in so let's just uh all right, so let's watch. Let's go watch that. Well, you see the ball bounce, and you can kind of see that the animation is really kind of choppy, and that's because it's at such a low frame rate. We did, uh, we have 15 frames per second, so that's uh, or 14 frames per second. My bad. So 14 frames per second. So that was more. That was about a sec. That was one second right there. Just these 12 frames is one second of animation. Now that's what one thing a lot of people don't realize in this kind of in the animation world is that now with 3D animation it it's a bit easier because you pose your character and then you make the next pose a few frames down the line and then the computer just automatically figures hey I'm supposed to move from this frame to this frame in certain ways so that it works so basically it does most of the uh, in between work for you which which is not a bad thing which is not a bad thing but that's what a lot of people don't understand when they go from 3d to 2d is that it doesn't do that by itself you have to draw each frame which is in my opinion why sometimes 2d animation is better so back on the topic of frame rate so we, we see how fat so see how kind of choppy that that sort of plays out but if we drop the frame rate even more you can see now you can tell that they're just individual images they're not just like a cohesive thing so it's like you take that you take that bounce and then you uh, look at it like this and you can tell it's a whole lot smoother and if we just keep upping the frame rate so let's hop up to 15 it just the bounce keeps getting smoother and smoother and smoother uh, let's hop up to 24 Yes, it plays faster, but that's because there's uh, it's playing at way less than a second. Actually, this is half a second right here. Or, no, well, 12 frames is half a second, especially at 24. So, so you always got to keep in mind where your frame rate is. And a lot of programs will allow you to change at what, fra at what your frame rate is. Most of them have it set at a base of 24, because that's the industry. That's what I was trying to say earlier. That's the industry standard is t between 24 and 30 frames per second. So let's jump over to, uh, hang on. Next is squash and stretch. Uh, squash and stretch is a basic industry standard of 
animation. It's one of the 11 principles of animation, I think. It was 11 or 12, I do not remember. But basically, it, it's... Okay, so let's, let's say that we got... Let's say we got this guy right here. I know my drawing sucks, but that's because I'm kind of rushing. So let's say we got this guy here. And he... Let's say we're going to have him talk. Come on, draw layers. So... Now there, now this is one thing that, one thing that a lot of uh, traditional animators don't like about anime is because they don't use squash and stretch. So squash and stretch is basically this guy. Basically, when this guy talks, like if you look at my jaw, my jaw moves as I talk. And but with uh, one thing, a lot of uh, traditional animators don't like, like I'm reiterating myself, is that anime doesn't have a lot of squash and stretch it doesn't have those basics those basic fundamentals that most especially western animators uh, have is that they the mouth just moves but the jaw stays now i'm not saying that's for all but for a lot of it for a lot of anime it's like that so this guy's jaw needs to come down a wee bit at just as he talks otherwise it's just going to be you know, something, just something not really lifelike, I should say. It kind of just looks like, it would just kind of look like the mouth is plastered on there. Now, I'm betting this isn't making much sense since I don't have anything to, uh, anything to display. So, let's say, actually, ah, oh, crap. Ah, oh, crap, I could have done that. Okay, well, then let's do this again. Once again, I'm not good when it comes to tutorials, so bear with me. I might just cut a bunch of this out anyways. So, you have the ball here. And it's kind of coming down. So, we're just going to use a ball for a bunch of these. So, when it collides with the ground, that's when it squashes. It basically hits the ground and you know squishes down, and then as it comes back up, it stretches out, basically releasing all that extra tension that was just built up from the squash. And you know, you gotta kind of keep the volume of whatever object you're animating, you know, in proportion when doing this. But the other, other than that, so. So, oh, whoa. Let's move you back down to 12. So watch. There's the squash and stretch. Squash and stretch. Squash and stretch. He hits the ground, squashes down, and as he goes back up, he stretches out. Now, I'm going to teach more in depth of with the, about this later, but those are kind of the basics. Just basically like, uh, or like when somebody's face scrunches up, their face squashes together, and then and then it stretches out when, uh, like if somebody got scared. I don't have a good uh, example for this, but if you, uh, but I will teach squash and stretch a little bit more in depth. Like I said, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to give you guys some idea of what uh, what this is, and we'll come back to more later. Okay. So the next the next thing is anticipation. Now, once again, this is another thing anime does not have a lot of is anticipation now basically what anticipation is is an action that leads into that prepares it for another action i okay so you got a you got a character okay and they go to punch now that's just a punch but that's not very interesting so you need you need something to make that uh punch interesting so we'll we'll have this guy here. We'll have this guy here. Crap. And then let's say he just straight out punches.
Now let's give that a little test watch. Now see that that punch isn't all that interesting because he's just going forward and once again that's one thing a lot of anime does not wrong because I mean you know they they're trying to make high budget really good looking things on, on, on a uh, small time window so some of the things anime does to cut down time and energy it are very good for what they're trying to do but th it does make some of the actions look very boring in my opinion so what you do is you take wait no i don't want that what am i doing so from the beginning we'll pull out maybe three more frames so what you want him to do is instead of just straight up punching like that you want him to draw back now once again i'm I'm not good at teaching, so, you know, let me know if what I'm saying is too much or I'm getting too convoluted. Okay, so, we'll have him draw back. So now that he's drawn back, he'll go forward with a good punch. Okay, come on now. Pretty much, uh, a lot faster than how far he drew back. With slow motions, you want to add more frames. If, with fast motions, you want to add less frames. Now I guess that's, yeah, duh, no brainer. But a lot of people don't seem to get that. Some There are some people who don't seem to understand that. And I'm not saying like that's a bad thing, like, oh, if you don't understand it, you're bad. No, it just, just means you're still learning. I'm still learning. I'm just teaching. I just want to teach people who have no idea what they're doing something, at least something that I know. So let's go back. And So he punches. Now, that does it does add a lot more fluidity to the character. I guess if I added some more muscle movements and made him like, keel back when he's drawing back, it would have made it much more interesting. But I was just trying to give an example. Maybe if we up the frame rate, it might look a little better. Let's drop that. But you kind of get the idea because if you see a punch that's just thrown like that, it probably doesn't have that much power. But if you reel back and really l lay it into them, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's anticipation for you. Um, once again, I feel like I'm talking too much, but l let me know in the comments if if I'm talking too much while trying to do these tutorials, and I'll try and fix it, but this is like my first ever tutorial other than on other channels I've done. Okay, so let's turn this on real quick. Did I turn it on? I think I did. No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, so the next one is straight ahead. Now, there's, there's two animation... Uh, st like, there's two styles to animate. Ugh. <clears throat> there's two styles in animating. You have straight ahead and pose to pose, otherwise known as in betweening. Straight ahead is going through every single frame and, like, going, like I was doing with all these, just drew one frame, 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 drew one frame. Drew one frame. But the problem with straight ahead animation is that. A lot of times, okay, so we'll, we'll just animate this guy, like, walking. So, you know, just uh, shade that in so we know that's the back hand. Shade that in, so then we'll just, we'll just have this guy walk.
No, I'm not drawing. I'm not being as smooth with my animating as I could be, but I'm just trying to make it so that I can basically give you guys an idea as quick as possible. Maybe when I feel more confident about these things, I'll uh, kind of step it up when animating these uh, for tutorials. But, so. There's some kind of a drag race outside my house. So we got this guy just in a standard step. Just, he steps. Now, okay, that is a bit too fast. But when you watch, let me just kind of uh, reel through these. When you watch, you notice how his proportions kind of, kind of change. One problem with, uh, that a lot of people face with straight ahead animation is their character's proportions and sizes of certain things change and for, and then when you have a care what looks what you want to be a character just walking across the screen it looks like they're walking off into the background now that is kind of a cool effect but that is one problem that a lot of people have is you you take you take the character and you know go all the way through but then the certain things go off kilter for some reason uh, and that was a question I had when I was still learning is why does this keep happening? Why does it keep why does my character keep changing? Am I just doing something wrong? But no, it's 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 a standard trap that everybody falls into and I'm not saying uh, uh, Straight ahead animation is a bad thing, but it it's a it's a thing that you should only use every now and again And once again, we'll go more in way more in depth uh, with all of these later on with their each of them having their own video but I wanted to get something wanted to put something together right away and so this was just my best idea now the last thing I'm gonna teach for this video seeing as we're already going on 20 minutes is in betweening now in betweening is basically actually what I did here if you remember, I sat there and I started with just the, the regular punch, but then I put frames in between it to fix the motion. Basically, in betweening is making one one uh one extreme pose, one extreme pose, one extreme pose, and then doing everything in between. Or the key you have the key poses and then your secondary actions and your extremes. If I remember my terminology correctly, which I, I most likely I don't. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can wonder, what is that? What am I doing? So, basically, let's let's do another walking. So we'll just kind of have this guy strolling along. So then we. So next we'll have, in the next pose, whoops, in the next pose we'll have his foot curled now that he's stepping on it. And basically we'll put his head at the same position, try and, ma try and match the size. Let's go with that. So...
And now this is this is something a uh, little animation trick that is super duper unknown to a lot of starting animators, and it it was unknown to me when I learned. So, but when you do learn it, it makes it makes animating walk cycles so much easier. I remember how much I hated, absolutely hated making walk cycle, but then I learned this, and I'm like, thank you. Because it just it makes the whole thing much easier. It takes well, it it takes a bit more forethought because you got to think, okay, how is this gonna go? How's this gonna go? How's this gonna go? Uh, wait. Okay, so it's handle like here. See, and it's kind of hard. And sometimes this isn't the best thing. It all depends on what you're animating and when. Like what the timing of it's gonna be. Let's you know, let's do two frames in between. Let's uh So we'll So for this frame For this frame we'll just put his head here. Nope. We'll have his foot flat. His foot was curled in this frame, right? Yep. So, actually, we'll have it slightly down. Not all the way, but slightly. We'll have this foot begin to rise like the Dark Knight. Now, I know I'm, once again, very sloppy work here, but it's just for the sake of the tutorial. It's just for the sake of this tutorial that I'm making most of my work really, really sloppy. Otherwise, I'd be... If, if, if I was just animating by myself right now, I'd be being very meticulous about, you know, where everything goes and how everything works. And hell, I might have just added even more than just two frames in between. I might have added, like, five. But for the sake of the tutorial, I have to make some cuts. Budget cuts. Not really budget cuts. So, he steps down... And there you go, there you go. And he jumps forward, but see, that's another thing we can fix with a little bit of in between. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> when you're using TV Paint, if you have the uh, demo version, always remember to hit Shift K. Otherwise, uh, you will have two p two frames on the same page. So let's. Uh... So this is a full curl, so let's do half curl. So let's do this at a half swing, half swing. There. So that just kind of covers the gap. And you kind of get the idea. So. Whoa, that is, why is that a 24? So you kind of get the idea of, see how much smoother that looks? Now I understand there's that drop. You know what, here. Let's uh, move this back. Let's move this back. So you see how smooth that is, and then he just kind of jumps. So in betweening is basically an easier way to keep your character in proportion and much smoother it's also a good way to if if you do straight ahead it's also kind of a good cleanup tool so basically uh, if you do straight ahead animation and you're like wow that looks very choppy I missed something then you just throw a frame right in between there like uh, if you're if you're animating on paper you, you always number the corner of your page and if say say between one and f one or one and two there's like a bit of a jump 
that you don't understand. So then, you know, I always put like 1.1 or 1.2, 1.5, whatever, whatever kind of suits what your your needs. And that, and I mean, that's only if you know you're animating, you know, this stuff, you know, with paper pick holes and all that. Uh, so that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. Uh, going on half an hour. I'll probably cut down a lot of the. Uh, oh crap! No, I can't put that back. I'll probably cut out a lot of the uh, kind of quiet parts, or you know, where I'm just sitting there drawing the frames. I'll probably cut a lot of those out, so it'll cut the video down. Oops, cut the video down quite a bit. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the tutorial in the comments. Leave a like. Uh, there will be more in-depth tutorials on, on frame rate, squash and stretch, anticipation, straight ahead, and in betweening later on, later on in the future. Uh, if you guys have any tips for me, for me on how to teach, because this is a learning experience for everybody. Uh, if you guys any have any tips or what I should do better with these tutorials, please let me know in the comments. But uh, anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you later. Bye.